So I had thought about this obsession with identity from a developmental perspective too. And I thought this insistence by a, a loud minority that their determination of their identity take primacy is, first of all, it's just, it's wrong, technically, I think, because an identity isn't merely what you feel you are. An identity is way more complicated than that, as any decent social constructionist should already know. An identity is a role, a set of complex roles that you negotiate with other people so that you can thrive across a very long span of time. And it, it can't be something that you impose on other people because then they won't cooperate with you. Now, you might say that you have a right to impose certain aspects of it on other people, and you could have a reasonable debate about that, but identity is definitely not merely what you feel it is, and it's certainly not merely what you feel it is moment to moment. That identity is actually much more like that of a three or four year old child. And I mean this technically, it's not an insult. So when you're a child, you pick up one identity after another and play with them. So for example, my granddaughter, who's about three at the moment, if you ask her who she is, she has two names, a first name and a second name, and her dad calls her by her second name and her mom calls her by her first name. So she's Ellie or Scarlett, and she's fine with either of those. But she's also Pocahontas. And if you ask her whether she's Ellie or Scarlett or Pocahontas, she will say Pocahontas. And she has said that for eight months. It's amazing. It's been that persistent in a child of that age. It's quite remarkable. But what she's doing uh, is playing, you know, and girls will play to be boys at that age and boys will play to be girls. And they're, they play with multitudinous identities and then they settle into one. So then the question is, what if you disrupt that play? That's fantasy play. And then another question might be, well, what if you disrupt it with technology? Not that technology itself is producing a message that's counter to that, but that the fact that children are on technology all the time means they're not engaging in that kind of identity establishing fantasy play. And then you might say, well, maybe what you see happening in that case is that it bursts out in, in late adolescence. And the insistence there that my identity is what I say it is, is actually the, the scream in some sense of, a, of an organism that hasn't gone through that egocentric period of play where they are, in, in a fictional sense, exactly the way they define themselves. You can't tell my granddaughter, who's three, that she isn't Pocahontas. It's stupid to tell her that because she means it in an experimental sense. And all you're doing is interfering with her fantasy play. And so I see a fair bit of this as delayed fantasy play with the kind of pathology that comes up when you delay a necessary developmental stage. Now, that could be wrong, you know, and probably is, but, but still, it looks, to me like, it looks to me like that's part of what's happening. It's very strange yeah. to see this insistence. Like, I, I just, it's so conceptually unsophisticated. The, the, even the hypothesis that identity is only what you feel that it is. And the intense insistence that that be the case is also another mystery. It's like, why is it that it's a foregone conclusion that other people have to go along with your self-definition? So I think... Uh... First of all, that's fascinating, and that fits rather exactly with what I'm getting at. And I suspect it is adding uh, a dimension where I was vague about the developmental pathway. But you're absolutely right that a child can take on an identity, and effectively, within limits, they are allowed to assert that identity, and adults will play along with it. 